Hello, everyone. Today, we will study another type of arterial sclerosis, atherosclerosis, ETH for short. ETH is characterized by intimal lesions called atheromas or atherosclerotic plaques that impinge on the vascular lumen and can rupture to cause sudden occlusion. The basic structure of atheroma is a soft, friable lipid cause covered by fibrous caps, and the lipid cause consists of cholesterol crystals and necrotic debris. Before understanding ATH in detail, we first look at this autopsy case, 58-year-old male, security guard, a little bit fat, suddenly died when he was patrolling. He had a history of smoking and drinking for over 30 years. When he was autopsied, we found that his coronary arteries and aorta were very hard, like electric wires, and the lumens were seriously blocked. On the cut surface, in the lumina of coronary arteries, some semi-lunar plaques were observed, and the aorta from the root to abdominal segment presented many yellow-white plaques, and some with ulcer and calcification on the intima. Now, I guess you have known the pathological diagnosis of the arteries. Yes, it's ATH. Then you may ask, is his sudden death due to his abnormal blood vessels? What made the changes? Are they alcohol or cigarettes? How did they make it? To answer these questions, we should develop a full understanding of ATH. The prevalence and the severity of ATH have been correlated with a number of risk factors. Among them, some are constitutional and others are acquired or related to modifiable behaviors. These risk factors have roughly multiplicative effects. Constitutional factors include genetics, family history, including age and male gender. Concretely, they may be a familiar hypercholesterolemia, family member with hypertension and or ATH, the age over 40, and the women in postmenopausal period, etc. The factors above are least controllable, but we can control these modifiable risk factors. Hyperlipidemia, and more specifically, hypercholesterolemia, is different from the familiar type mentioned above, and is a major risk factor for development of atherosclerosis and is sufficient to induce lesions in the absence of other risk factors. In the list of proteins, only HDL is a good one, others related to increasing risk of ATH. We can decrease the intake of high lipid from our diet. Take more fish oil, continue omega-3 fatty acids, use the drug statins, any inhibitor again against hmg coa reductase to decrease the bad cholesterol, do access to raise HDL level, controlling the blood pressure and the sugar, giving up smoking, all are beneficial to be far away from ATH. Of course, we can also lower the risk by regulating the following factors, deactivating inflammation, correcting metabolism syndrome, then regulating serum, homocysteine, and lip lipoprotein levels. Then, how the risk factors initiate ATH? The currently held view of pathogenesis is embodied in the response to injury hypothesis. Injury indicates and cellular damage response means that the corresponding arteries respond to this injury. In this model, ATH is a chronic inflammation. In simple terms, endothelial cells are injured by the risk factors. Then, endothelial dysfunction occurs. This increases blood vessels' permeability, leukocytes and plate adhesion, 
monocytes migrate to the intima and activation into macrophages. Simultaneously, smooth muscle cells are recruited to the intima. Accumulation of lipoproteins, most are oxidized LDL and cholesterol, are engulfed by macrophages in the smooth muscle cells. These lipid-loaded cells, named as foam cells, are further activated. The recruited smooth muscle cells synthesize extracellular matrix, most notably collagen, which stabilizes atherosclerotic plaques. However, activated inflammatory cells in astromers can also induce in tumor smooth muscle cells apoptosis and breakdown of matrix, leading to the development of unstable plaques and complicated morphological changes, including thrombosis, hemorrhage, aneurysm, etc. Based on the above-mentioned pathogenesis, we can deduce the basic pathological changes generally from the initiation of developed plaque to unstable plaque. It experiences three stages, fatty streak form cells, fibrous aceromatous plaque, well-developed plaque, and complicated plaque with secondary changes such as calcification. Fatty streak begins as minute yellow, flat macules that coalesce into elongated lesions, largely with the austere of branch vessels. When stained with Sudan red, it shows red staining, decomposed of sperm cells, but are only minimally raised and have no significant effect on the blood flow. Fibrous aceromatous plaque are patchy, usually involving only a portion of any given arterial wall. On cross section, therefore, the lesion appears eccentric, as white to yellow raised foci. They are larger than fatty streak in diameter, and can also coalesce to form large masses. Local flow disturbance, such as turbulence at branch points, increase the likelihood of plaque formation. Most commonly, plaques have a superficial fibrous cap most of smooth muscle cells and relatively dense of collagen, where the cap meets the vessel wall as the shoulder of the astroma is a more cellular area, containing macrophages, T cells, and smooth muscle cells. Deep to the fibrous cap is a necrotic core, containing lipids, primarily cholesterol crystals, necrotic debris, foam cells, fibrin, and other plasma proteins. The periphery of the lesions shows neovascular radiation, proliferating small blood vessels. The media deep to the plaque may be attenuated and exhibit smooth muscle atrophy and loss. The figure is the junction of the fibrous cap and core, showing scattered inflammatory cells, calcification, and neovascular radiation. In descending order of severity, atherosclerosis involves the infrarenal, abdominal, and iliac aorta, coronary arteries, thoracic aorta, internal carotid arteries, and cerebral arteries, especially villous loop. Complicated plaques present secondary changes, thrombosis, dystrophic calcification, ulceration, hemorrhage, and aneurysm. This slide shows us the renal morphological changes of complicated plaques. Let's summarize the content above. At lesion-prone areas, ATH is initiated by risk factors, including endothelial dysfunction, further to develop fibrous aceromatous plaque is composed of inner causes and fibrous cap, which is a stable plaque. However, plaque inflammation may increase collagen degradation and reduce collagen synthesis, thereby destabilizing the mechanical integrity of the cap, which promotes vulnerable plaque formation. Along with the progression of the plaque, plaque erosion or rupture typically triggers 
thrombosis, leading to partial or complete vascular obstruction and often tissue infection, even aneurysm. In other words, myocardial infection, heart attack, cerebral infection, stroke, aortic aneurysm, and peripheral vascular diseases, gangrene of extremities are the major clinical consequences of APH. Now, let's consider this case again. I believe you have had a whole process from the initiation of APH to his sudden death as shown in this slide. This topic, ATH, requires us to grasp the definition, pathological changes, and clinical consequences to familiarize with the risk factors and the pathogenesis. That's all for this class. Thanks for watching.